Hello, in this video we're going to derive the mean and the variance of an F distribution and we'll jump right in. So this is the, the PDF of an F distribution and I have a, a video on how to derive that from first principles of the ratio of two chi-square distributions. Um, but this is the density. And so first of all we want to show that this is a PDF. And so what we do is we integrate this density over uh, zero to infinity. Now here, actually the range is, is, uh, is greater than zero. But if one is bigger than some number, I want to say one or two, then it's actually F is greater than or equal to zero. But you'll have to double check me on that. But first let's show that it's a PDF. And so we... Uh, this density we make a variable change let x equal it's actually this piece right here and then we take the derivatives of both sides and then when we plug in our information f is uh, you know it's uh, x times uh, r2 divided by r1 raised to that power the denominator is this and the uh, the df that would be here is uh, is uh, r2 over r1 dx which is this so now what we do is I take this um, r2 divided by um, r1 and, and separate it here bring it out so it's raised to the r1 divided by 2 minus 1 and then I add that with it so then it's r1 divided by 2 but then when we take this and combine it with this, the R1s cancel and the R2s cancel and we get 1 raised to a power, which just goes away. And then, uh, um, yeah, then, then it brings us down to here. So we still have this, these constants out front and we have x to this power and we have um, 1 plus x to this power. So this is actually a beta distribution, one of the forms of a beta distribution when the R1 and R2 are, are integers. And if you see a video I put out on the mean and variance of a T distribution, I go from this, beta, this form of the beta distribution to the form of the beta distribution that you see in most books. And so I'm gonna skip that derivation in here and we're gonna assume this is a beta and so it's alpha minus one, and then it's alpha plus beta, and then gamma of alpha, gamma of beta, gamma of alpha plus beta. So this integrates to one. Now let's find the mean of this distribution. So what we do is we stick an F in with the PDF, and, and then we integrate it from zero to infinity. So we make the same variable change where this is X, then we df, dx and df, and we plug that information into our density and we get this. Now, I separate the x and the, you know, up, up here, I combined them and then I separate them. But at this stage, I just separated them. And then uh, I brought up the, the this. Um, so now we take this and bring it over and there's actually one left over. That's what this is. These remain the same and we get the uh, X um, here. You, you know, to trick this into a beta, I, min I add one and minus one to this to get it into, you know, so it can be alpha minus one. And then over here, I need, you know, this, R1 plus 2 divided by 2 in the um, exponent. So then I have to subtract it to, so I don't change this number. But I do that because then this is alpha, and that's alpha, and that's beta. And then the derivative of this piece, if I had the right constants, would be a beta distribution. It would integrate to 1. But since I don't have the right constants, then it's like the reciprocal of those constants is what this equals to. So then this piece becomes this. So these constants stay the same. And this is actually the reciprocal of the constants that you would normally see in front of a beta. Um, because if we were to put them there, then it would integrate to one. So now things cancel. This cancels with that. Um, here, if we subtract one, 
then we get um, um, so what do we do here oh this yeah these cancel and this just comes over and then this one cancels with that but there's a R1 divided by 2 left over and this one goes into here but there is an R2 minus 2 over 2 left over and I have a video on the properties of the gamma distribution if you want to uh, review that to understand these properties how you subtract one and then you and then it's another gamma well then this reduces to R2 divided by R2 minus 2 and this is for R2 uh, greater than 2 and this has to happen for some of these intervals to converge but this is the mean of an F distribution now let's look at the second moment and we're going we're gonna to skip one step here where we're looking at the expected value of f squared, which is this. You make this variable change and you get to this. Now, um, here um, we, we pull this, the R2 over 1 out, combine it with this, and then cancel with this. Um, and then what's left over, we come down to here. So this R1 over 2 and the R2 over 1's cancel to R2 over R1 squared. The, these gamma constants stay the same. And we have alpha or we have x over x plus 1. So we have to change this exponent to something minus 1 because then that becomes our alpha in our beta distribution. And then the, the exponent of this, we have to manipulate it. So we have an, an alpha component here, they're the same, and then it's plus whatever. And so we add 4 and subtract 4 to this, and that's how we get that. But then this looks like a beta distribution, and it integrates to these constants. Now, um, now we start uh, you know, simplifying. This cancels with that. Um, this one goes into here but leaves some extra and then this one goes into there and leaves some extra and we we get down to this so the r2 squared comes here and then this goes into here but leaves uh, this piece and this piece and then this one goes into there and leaves those two pieces and then that reduces to this and then it becomes this. So this is the second moment. Second, and then uh, for see the properties of the gamma function. It's a video I put out if you want more help with that. Now the variance becomes the expected value of x squared times the mean squared. So this is the expected value here. And then we minus the mean squared. So then we factor out this quantity and it leaves this then we we multiply that multiply that in we get this then we simplify the r's cancel and there's there's going to be a two common we can factor that out um, the r1's combine and we're left with this and that is the variance of a beta distribution and oh this is actually uh only valid for when the denominator degrees of freedom are greater than four and that's to ensure that some of the integrals converge. And you can kind of just see that if it's less than 4, we get a negative, which, you know, you can't have a negative variance. Well, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.